This image has the typical problem of a flat that has overcorrected the vignetting pattern. In these cases, it is advisable to activate the simplified model. First, we are going to apply gradient correction with its default parameters. We won't use structure protection since it would protect the inverted vignetting, which is even brighter than the nebula. When we apply the tool with the default values, we can see that the gradients are more complex than they initially seemed because they have quite abrupt edges. To correct for these gradients without using a simplified model, we need to decrease the scale parameter first. Gradient correction can then create a more complex model. We should probably also decrease the smoothness parameter to achieve a more precise correction. However, decreasing the smoothness does not improve the modeling of the gradients. By decreasing these two parameters, we include the nebula in the gradient model. If we generate the model, we will see that the nebula is in it. We can also see the effect in the image because we are emptying the inside of the nebula. Let's see what happens if we activate the simplified model. In this case, we will need at least a polynomial of degree 2 to model the drop in radial brightness. With the same parameters and the simplified model activated, we managed to correct the radial gradient better and also did not empty the nebula. Let's see if we can flatten the image even more using a higher polynomial degree. This is the result of grade 3 and this with grade 2. The change is very subtle. Let's try now with grade 4. This is with grade 4, and this is with grade 3. We can see a significant improvement by using grade 4. This is grade 2, grade 3, and grade 4. If we try grade 5, we see a very subtle improvement. With grade 6, the corners begin to oscillate. Therefore, we will stay with grade 4. And finally, since we still have traces of the radial gradient left, we try automatic convergence. By iterating, we further reduce the residual gradients and practically do not affect the nebula. As we said in previous videos, if dark nebulae are present, we will need to increase the low tolerance parameter. This example is quite delicate because the dark nebulae are very diffuse and occupy a large part of the image. We start with the default parameters and turn structure protection off. As we can see, the default parameters work very poorly in this image. We are flattening all of the dark nebulae and creating bright halos around them. Let's first try increasing the low tolerance value. In this way, we are telling gradient correction that in the nebula's local environment, the sky background value is above them. With this setting, we manage to reduce the effect of bright halos and also recover the darkness of the nebulae. With these parameters, we still leave the nebulae very flat because they are very large and diffuse. We are going to try to recover their volume. First, we increase the scale parameter. 
we take it to its maximum value to see if the gradients are corrected well. In this way, we manage to recover part of the contrast of the largest dark nebulae, and the red gradient at the bottom right is still corrected reasonably well. To better correct this residual gradient, we can try activating automatic convergence. Now the gradient is better corrected, but at the cost of flattening the nebulae a little. To avoid this, we are going to try increasing the smoothness value. The nebulae have more volume now. Compared to the version without convergence, we now correct the corner gradient a little better and have a much better contrast in all the dark nebulae. This was the original image. This is with the default values. This is by increasing the low tolerance value. This is by increasing the scale. This is with automatic convergence. And this is by increasing the smoothness value.